If you guys have seen my last video on the north, you know I want to make very detailed videos on some of the regions that have a lot of fun lore packed in it by George Martin. The Westerlands did have a small moment in the spotlight in Season 7, but Castle Rock didn't look anything more than your regular castle. The Westerlands are covered with hills and mountains, with the south having more open plains. It's off the coast of the Sunset Sea, with the Riverlands to the north, the Crownlands to the east, and the Reach at the southern border. The capital of this kingdom is Lannister's home, Casterly Rock. If you're wondering why it's Casterly Rock and not Lannister Rock, it's actually a fitting story. We always hear about how rich this family is, while well, their home is a giant gold mine. Their castle is built within a giant stone hill that's three times taller than the wall up in the north. This impenetrable castle didn't always belong to the Lannisters. Thousands of years ago, it was ruled by an ancient family called the Casterlies. A man named Land the Clever somehow tricked his way into taking the castle for himself. It isn't clear how exactly he did this, with some saying he snuck into a secret passage and pretended to be a ghost, convinced the Castellies that the place was haunted, and scared them off. In other tales, he snuck in rats, in others it was sneaking in lions, and in other tales, he simply married the right person. However he did it, the castle has been the Lannisters ever since. The castle is also referred to as the Rock, and the Westerlands were actually called the Kingdom of the Rock before the Targaryens landed. How the Castellies found all this gold is just as fun and unbelievable as Land the Clever's origins. The first Casterly Lord was a huntsman named Carlos, son of Castor. Supposedly, a lion began eating his village's sheep, so he tracked it back to its den. The lion's den was a cave in the base of the rock, and with his spear, Carlos was able to kill the lion and the lioness that was also in the cave. However, he spared their cubs, and it's believed that his mercy was rewarded by the old gods, showing him where to find the gold. If the story is to be believed, a sudden shaft of sunlight guided him to a large vein of gold. To protect their gold, the Castellies fortified their new home and built deeper into the rock. They were never kings, but were powerful and the richest lords of Westeros. Just outside of Castle Rock is Lannisport. This city is ruled by a branch family of the Lannisters, simply called House Lannister of Lannisport. This is the third largest port city in Westeros after King's Landing and Old Town. Since the Westerlands are unfortunately located near the Iron Islands, Lannisport has to deal with their raids. The Lannister's entire fleet is located at Lannisport Harbor, outside the city's walls, and the burning of their entire fleet is what initiated the Greyjoy Rebellion a few years before the start of the series. Euron Greyjoy planned a surprise attack. The Lannisters would eventually get their revenge because it was a dumb rebellion that had no chance of success. The witch that Cersei had her fortune read by lived and operated her creepy business in Lannisport. She was called Maggie the Frog and was pretty popular in the city for her love potions and cures. She was brought over from Essos by her rich merchant husband. Eventually, their son would be the founder of House Spicer when Tywin's father upgraded the family status to lords. Their seat became the ruined castle of Castamere in the third book, A Storm of Swords. It was vacant for so many years after House Rain's extinction to remind people of what they did. If you recall the song, The Reigns of Castamere, it was a clue Catelyn Stark noticed before the Red Wedding went down. This song reminds everyone what Tywin Lannister is capable of. In 261 AC, two houses in the Westerlands, House Rain of Castamere and House Tarbeck of Tarbeck Hall, rebelled against their liege lord, House Lannister. Tywin's father, Tytos, was in power at the time and he was a weak lord. Tywin handled the situation by destroying both houses and having their families go extinct. This led to Tywin becoming Hand of the King to his old friend Aerys Targaryen II, known now as the Mad King. Casimir began as a mine just like Castle Rock in a bunch of locations in the Western Lands. At one point, they were as rich as the Lannisters because of all their gold and silver. Eventually, the gold and silver dried up, so the mine was turned into a part of their home. The majority of the castle was underground. Three days after burning down Tarbeck Hall, Tywin arrived at Castamir only to find that the rains were hiding in the mines. Instead of accepting House Rain's terms for surrender, Tywin had the mines sealed and flooded. Not a single one of the 300 people down below made it out. That wasn't enough for Tywin, he also had the surface of the castle set on fire. It's a strange reward for House Spicer to have the Castamere ruins. The charred castle Tarbeck is still vacant and will probably remain that way. Not too far off from Castamere and Tarbeck Hall is Case. This town's history is a weird one. It was once ruled by the Ironborn, but was ironically given to the Kings of the Rock by an Ironborn. Herrick Kenning was an Ironborn fighter from House Kenning, whose family rules in the Iron Islands. 
When the Ironborn's power was low, Hera Kenning betrayed his people by using a warhorn to signal the horrors to open the gate so his men could take the town for the Kings of the Rock. He's known as Herrick the Horror Son. He became the founder of House Kenning of Case, while the rest of his family remained House Kenning of Harla back on the Iron Islands. The horn he used is called the Horn of Herrick and is passed down to his descendants like a Valyrian steel weapon would. Nearby is Fair Isle, the only island in the Westerlands. I know I've talked a lot about the Ironborn and their raiding ways in this video, but prepare to hear more. The Westerlands are closer to the Iron Islands than any other kingdom, and a lot of the time it's up to Fair Isle to defend the coast with their longships. The ruling family is House Farman, whose seat is Fair Castle. They were once First Men Kings, and the only other notable thing about this family is they're known for their hatred of Ironborn. Out east is the Golden Tooth, a small castle that defends an opening in the mountain range that allows passage to the Riverlands. This region of the Western Lands was conquered by King Sirian Lannister long ago. The Lannisters must have extracted a large portion of the gold here because it's said the gold from the Golden Tooth helped the Lannisters become the wealthiest family. After they were done mining, it must have been given to House Lefford since they rule here. Heading south from Castle Rock is Clegane's Keep. House Clegane is a new house of Lannan Knights, so they aren't considered lords. The founder was a kennel master at Castle Rock named Clegane. When out in the plains, Tytho's Lannister, Tywin's weak father I mentioned earlier, was attacked by a lioness. Clegane saved his life but lost his leg and three dogs in the fight. Titles gave him a tower house with land and the title of Landed Knights for his new house. Their sigil has three dogs, paying respects to the dogs who fell in battle defending Titos. Now the tower house has a horrible reputation because of Gregor Clegane, aka the Mountain, the current knight of Clegane's Keep. His servants mysteriously disappear and even the dogs are afraid of this place. The Mountain's cruel nature would explain all of that. Further south, by the border between the Reach, is Kraykal. House Kraykal is a family known for their physical strength. Their founder was one of the first men during the Age of Heroes. His name was Kraik the Boar Killer, so you know these guys are tough. One member of this family that stands out is Aubrey Kraykal. During one of the countless wars with the Iron Islands, after a Lannister victory led by Aubrey, he declared himself King of the Iron Islands, something the Lannisters didn't support. His reign didn't even last six months, however, after the Ironborn sacrificed him to their drowned god. There are a lot of more houses that have yet to be given a location, so I left those out of this video. Some of the less interesting locations with no backstory, I just subtly added them in throughout the region without discussing them. But that's the Westerlands, a place filled with so much gold that even after thousands of years of mining, the place still has more gold and silver to offer. I've been planning a Westworld video for my next upload, so don't be too shocked when you see a non-Game of Thrones related video under your subscriptions. Thanks for watching.